Hello, we are back with another installment of A Closer Look with Mark Miller and Mark Shine. And we just took off. We just took off. Almost in an airplane. With my basketball tie on. Oh, how about that? you're you looking know? good. Yeah, how about that? You're looking good. Hey, yeah. you and I did a game right. uh, down at uh, the Habitat of the Cat, one right. of our favorite yep. nicknames for a gymnasium, Jackson Center, and uh, Rushi this weekend. And we saw something that, uh, you know, looked pretty appetizing. And, and then we saw the, the videographer <laughs> from uh, one of the teams Rushi, take yeah. a bite into it. And, and I think he hit one of those uh, jalapenos or whatever you call them babies. And man, he went zipping down that ladder, <laughs> headed for some. This is the loaded nachos at Jackson Center High School, some of the fair at basketball games. And you see what we get to, yeah. to deal with. Now, we didn't eat that, but I kind of wish I would have tried. I, I know. If I hadn't yeah. had dinner, That's I'd have done stuff. the same thing. And the good yeah. thing was that kid left all the other jalapenos after the yeah. first one. <laughs> at the end, it was all gone except for the jalapeno. <laughs> yeah. All right. Hey, let's review some All of those right. games last weekend. I start off. Versailles out of the MAC against Fort Recovery. Versailles the winner, 55 to 48. This game at halftime was Fort Recovery winning 25-22. But in the second half, Versailles shoots 60% from the floor. Fort Recovery just 30%. And the difference was that seven-point victory. Caleb Martin for Fort Recovery, 13.7 rebounds. Peyton Judy, 11 points. They are now 9 and 3, 3 and 1 in the MAC. Versailles, AJ Arms, not Justin. AJ led him in scoring. 18.7 rebounds. Keaton McEldowney, 16 points. Justin Arms, 9 and 9. They are 13 and 1, 5 and 0, oh, and in first place in the MAC conference. They are, and of course, we had a, a kind of an upset weekend in the Blanchard Valley Conference this weekend. If you look at how things went, there were five teams who were undefeated going into conference play. Well, one of them was Hopewell Loud. They're 4-0 in conference play. They're playing Corey Rawson, who's 2-3. What happens? Corey Rawson ties their season-high scoring record. They put 57 on the board. Eric uh, Ritter had 23, including four threes. Bryce Tuttle had 14, and they upset Hopewell Loud, giving them their first loss in conference play, 57-49. So there's one team out with a loss. Then Pandora Gilboa. They're 3-0 in Blanchard Valley Conference play, heading into their game with North Baltimore, who was also 2-3 going into play. North Baltimore put 73 points on the board. Julian Hagemeyer had 19, including five threes. They put four other players in double figures. That's three consecutive games that North Baltimore scored 33 points or more. They defeat Pandero Gilboa 73-65. So now Liberty Benton undefeated, and then Van Buren, Lipsick. Hopewell out in Pandora Gilboa, all with a single loss in conference play. All right, Saturday night, we split up. Kind we of did. a trial separation. Yeah. <laughs> We're back together now, though. Yeah. I went over to Wayne Trace to do Shawnee. Wayne Trace comes away the winner, 77-55. For Shawnee, Tyler Moore, their leading rebounder, did not play. Was out on the floor warming up a little bit, but it was all left-handed because he's got that right shoulder injury. They really missed him inside. Wayne Trace has a couple of 6'5 guys inside. They're strong. That's a really good basketball yes, team. And they are led by Ethan Linder. Ethan did not disappoint. Ended up with 32 points, including four threes. But he had 20 at halftime. Ray Manley from Shawnee came out and guarded him man-to-man. -man. And in the third quarter, Ethan had six points. They were all up around the basket. One on a follow-up and the other two on fast break. So Ray Manley played some serious defense. But Wayne Trace... 13 and 1 overall, and they are on a roll. That's a really good basketball yeah. team. And Mark, we thought we'd do something a little bit different this week. Rather than feature teams, we would look yeah. at guys who had big weekends. And we're going to start with Brody Bowman from Temple Christian. He had 32 against Ridgemont, including five from the three point line. His team wins 73 56. Brody Bowman against a box of one. <laughs> Puts 32 on the board. It didn't work. It didn't work. They, they're missing Seth Holbein. He's out with a lower leg injury. They hope to get back to the Pioneers sometime end of January, beginning of February. They made 11 threes, six more from what Brody made as well. Uh, that's a good shooting basketball team. If they get Holbein back, they'll be even more dangerous. Hey, a couple of milestones this weekend. Derek J. a few weeks ago, went over 1,000 points. This week, he became the school's all-time leading scorer. He had 21 points and a 55-50 win over USV. He ends up with 1,195. That's today. It's going to go up, obviously. He is one point ahead of Mark Ashman. Boy, was oh, he a good yes, player, huh? The big fella. 1,194. And then Jay Stockwell from Delphus Jefferson had 14 points in Jefferson's win over PG, 44-31.
and that puts him over 1,000. Congratulations to both those guys. We kind of talk about uh, Perry. We always think about their perimeter play, but Colby Glover had a big weekend for them last weekend. He had the season high 25 on Friday in their win over Lehman. He had came back with 24 on Saturday with a win against Allen East. He's been in double figures every game except the Wapak game where he scored nine. So one point away from being in double figures for every game. They're 11 and three are the Commodores, and they're going to be heavily favored the next eight basketball games. It's a good team out of Perry. For Anthony Masterlasco from Liberty Benton, had 23 points on Friday night against League Foe Arlington. And then on Saturday, listen to this one, 27.16 rebounds in an overtime game against Toledo Christian. So he wasn't just filling it up when yeah. they're up by 20. They needed every one of those rebounds and every one of those points. LB now 11 and 3, 6 and 0 in the BVC, and Anthony Master Lasko as good as any player in this area. That's similar to what he did the night we saw him yeah. against Van Buren. Yep. Yeah. And one more, Brady Wildermuth from Jackson Center. Now we saw him on Friday night against Rushi. His team couldn't get the ball in the basket. They scored just 34 points. He put 40 on the board against a good Marion local team, along with no, no, uh, nine rebounds. He had 40 and nine. Marion local scored 33 points total. Wildermuth had 40 himself. He can play too. He can play. Hey, for our bright spot this week, we talked to you about the Military Appreciation Night, the, the initiative that Jerry Snodgrass, our good buddy, started. And, and we saw it all over the area on Friday and Saturday. Mark, you yep. there, there you're seeing uh, yep. some a choir singing. That's a Fort Recovery and Versailles game. I was at Wayne Trace on Saturday night. They did a very nice job, just a, a really great idea. And the uh, high schools, there you see the veterans shaking hands with some of the Temple players. Uh, boy, we just can't thank our veterans enough. And Jerry Snodgrass decided, let's get the young people involved. This will develop more patriotism than listen to 100 national anthems. This was really, really a good idea. It really was. And I know I, I'm a kind of a Twitter follower of Jerry's, and he posted a lot of things that happened statewide. And did, Twitter just exploded with all the good things that happened involving our military. And at Bath High School, they did just the opposite. They lined all of the military people up, and then they had to Players and shooters come by and shake hands that's with awesome. one each. It, it was yeah. a great evening all the way around. Yep, that's great. All right, plays of the week. Plays Coach of the Sean. week. Here we go. We've got two we want to look at this week. And the first one I want to look at, everybody, most everybody, likes to get out and transition and run a little bit. Well, some teams run what they call the secondary break, where everybody runs to a certain spot on the floor. If we don't have something, then let's get into the next phase right into our offense. So we're going to look, first of all, at this sequence. This comes from Jackson Center and Rushi. This is Rushi in the blue, and they're going to run a secondary break. Here's the pass to the wing. Then the ball gets reversed, an exchange on the backside, and then here it goes right down to the low post. Now, the opposite Postman also breaks to the basket, and they get that secondary break and a cut to the basket as well. Let's look at the whole thing as we look at this. Here's the pass going to go here. There's a screen on the backside. We exchange places, and then watch this post guy right here. He goes down and forms up the reverse pass that takes place right here. And then when the defensive player goes down inside to help, this guy goes to the basket. Here's the nice bounce pass. And Jackson's Arushi gets a basket, and that's a nice play all the way around. A secondary break that leads to an easy layup. Then Lima Senior does a great job of running their half-court offense. This is going to be a screen for Jar Ward. And if Andre Griffin is watching, you need to get uh, your, uh, a guy involved here named Williams to set uh, picks for you or to set post moves for you or, or block or whatever you want to call it because he's going to get off a cut right in here, and then here comes Jar Ward, and watch the screen he sets right here. He goes right hand, right hand again, and Ward gets a layup on the backside. And that's a nice pass, but a really great screen. And obviously, it's good use of the screen by Jar Ward. Sure was. All right, good job. Hey, where are they now segment? This week, it's Mark Shine. Oh, no, that was oh, last yeah, week. Yeah, that was last week. Yeah, we did old people last week. <laughs> hey, this week, we're going to look at a couple of guys from Van Wert in the early 90s, Joe Gardner and Quincy Cloud. In the four years that they played for Keith Knopf's, 90 through 94, they were 82 and 18 led by those two guys in the same class. They had state teams in 1990 and again in 1992. As a matter of fact, in 1990, they were the only team to beat St. Henry, won all the rest of their games yeah. and won a state championship. What a great rivalry that was. In 91 and 92, the guys' senior year, they went 22 and four. Quincy Cloud was a 6'3", 200-pound inside-outside guy. He could go out and shoot the three. He could pound it inside, could dunk the basketball with ease. He had 21.5 average and with 5.6 rebounds his senior year. Ended up number two in career scoring at Van Wert behind Corey Sinig. Not a bad Good player. player yeah. He went then to Owens Tech, and he was on the JUCO National Championship team as a sophomore. 
Last we heard, and we think this is current, he's in St. Louis, Missouri, and he works at a youth detention center. Joe Gardner had 1,482 career points as a senior, 17 points, three rebounds, six assists. He could really fire up the three, and he had got rid of that thing so fast you could think you were guarding him, and you weren't. WBL Player of the Year, two-time All-Ohioan. He had a Van Wert career record, 247 threes, including 89 as a sophomore, which led the state. Went to Toledo and played basketball, got his business degree, got his MBA, ended up as a medical salesman in South Tampa. Boy, those two guys, you, really you'd played. like to say Mr. Inside and Mr. Yeah. Outside, but they both played outside. Those were two really good players. They really were. And you would never teach anybody to shoot like Joey Gardner. Right. It was kind of an awkward shot, but he was so quick with it and so good with it. Why not? Yeah, you talk about shooting from the holster. Yeah. He really did kind of and, bring it And flipped here. it real quick. It yeah. was great. Yep. Those are some good guys. All right. Naismith rules. Yeah. Mark Shine, we always deal with some rules. You went way back into the history books well, for this, this is one. This is the 125th anniversary of Naismith writing the rules for basketball. And, of course, James Naismith, uh, you know, a phys ed teacher. He was actually a, a BA guy. Then he got his doctor's degree, became a doctor of sports mm-hmm. physiology, and he eventually became a Presbyterian minister or two. He's working at Springfield at a YMCA in Springfield, Massachusetts, and he said, I need a game to keep the football guys busy when the cold weather's outside. And he came up with these 13 rules we're going to put up on here and just kind of look at them a little bit. I really like it when we get down into number five. No (laughs) shouldering, holding, pushing, tripping, or striking of an opponent. The first time is a foul, a serious second one, and you're gone. (laughs) Mess around. (laughs) They didn't mess around with that. And of course, and then if you look down at how do you score, there's a couple of ways that you can score. You get down to number seven, if you, uh, if you have three consecutive fouls, my team fouls three times in a row before your team does, that's a goal. Or, of course, the ball goes in the basket, and we're talking about peach basket. Uh-huh. It had to stay there. If the ball went in and stayed in the basket, or if the ball is on the basket, you go watch this and you slap the basket, goaltending by today's rules, that counts as, as well. Number nine is one of my favorites because now if I throw the ball out of bounds, your team gets it in bounds. Not back then. Whoever got it first got to put the ball back in bounds. So if I throw it away and one of my teammates goes and gets it, we get to throw it right back in bounds, and the referee gets to decide if there's an argument of who actually gets to do it. The referee takes it and throws it himself, <laughs> kind of like, like we would do you know, in just a dodgeball type yeah. game. Um, the umpire judges fouls and tells the referee about when the fouls have occurred, and then if we go into the next one, the referee is kind of in charge of keeping score. And then how about this one? Now, last week we saw a double overtime freshman game which put the JV game late, which put the varsity game late. If it goes into overtime, well, the two captains can get together and decide whether they want to keep playing or not. <laughs> if they don't, we'll just let it end in a tie. And, and James Naismith, he wrote 600 words for his rules to basketball. Today, there's over 20,000 words wow. in the rule book. Wow. Hey, that's pretty interesting. Yeah. And Springfield, Mass., you, Springfield yeah. College, that's, that's right. why the Basketball Hall of Fame That's exactly is why it's there. there. It is. All right, Coach Shine, good job. Hey, we want to preview a couple of the big games coming up this weekend. I'll start off. Fort Recovery. They are 9-3, and 3-1 three, three and one in the league at Marion Local, 8-5, and five, also 3-1. and one. This is a battle to stay close to Versailles. Both of these teams have already played Versailles. That's their one loss. Yep. Versailles beat them both. So this is a big game to stay close in case somebody, maybe in mid, mid-pack, even lower in the pack, another upset like we saw in the BBC, maybe somebody gets Versailles, then they can get in on a championship. So it's a big game. Big game. Trying to hang in the race. Lima Senior's got a big week. Now, on a Tuesday, tonight, the 24th, they play Lima Central Catholic in the Lima Cup. Now, that game has lost a little bit of its luster because so many great players graduated from a year ago off of both teams, but still a competitive game. But then Lima Senior, they have a huge game on Friday night with Toledo St. Francis at home. They lost to St. Francis earlier in the year up at St. Francis. The St. Francis team can score. They are averaging 71.8 points per game. They were averaging 82.3 over their last three basketball games. They're led by Kenny Coleman Graham, who was an all-league point guard a year ago. They play Toledo Wait on Tuesday night, so they might well be 13-1 by the time we get to a Friday night game with Lima Senior. And then Lima Senior a week from tonight on Tuesday the 31st. Then they have Toledo St. John's, a team that they've defeated earlier, but it's on an eight-game winning streak right now, giving up just 39 points a game in those eight games. B.J. Miller, Jar Ward, and their new player, Javier Caneros, uh, they're having good years so far. Caneros was a big help for them the other night. Keaton Upshaw is back from an ankle injury, still trying to play himself back into it. Big weekend for the Spartans coming up with three games coming up in the next eight days. All right, looking to get healthy. All right, in the Northwest Conference, there's a couple of big games as several teams are still in the hunt. 
Spencerville, 4-0 in the league, at Bluffton, 2-1. And, and Lincoln View, 2-2, two two, is at Crestview, 3-0. Along with them, Jefferson's also 3-1. Big games coming up the last three weeks. Listen to this, February 10, Spencerville at Crestview, two of the contenders. February 17, Jefferson at Spencerville. And then the last game of the season, Bluffton at Crestview. That's going to determine the champion. The key to all of that, Crestview home in all of those big games. So maybe advantage games. to Crestview. Especially with a young team over there. And finally, Rushi and Versailles, where you and I will be on Saturday night <laughs> with Versailles. Rushi, this is a team that's leading the SCAL along with Fort Laramie. They're 12-3, and 7-1. and one. Uh, They lost to Minster last week. They have Anna on Friday night, who's on a two-game win streak after losing four. Versailles, we highlighted a little bit earlier. They're 14-1. and one. They're leading the MAC 5-0. and oh. This is a kind of a SCAL, uh, MAC matchup. Uh, we've talked about Justin Arns a lot this year. A.J. Arns, though, had a big weekend last weekend. McLeodonie had a big weekend last weekend. A great matchup, and you and I will be there Saturday night. All right, looking forward to it. we got lots of games. Let's put them up on the screen so you can see. Pick one out. Go to it, then come home and watch all the replays. That's what Mark Shine and I do every week. <laughs> we go to, go to a game and watch games. All right, hey, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week on A Closer Look.